I wanted to come back out here on a Sunday. It was just way too loud during the week. I wanted to make sure I gave you context to what the projects we were doing on the excavator were, because I know I jumped around a lot between different activities. The first thing we wanted to do was reset my hour meter because I bought that digital hour meter and of course when I disconnected the battery I lost <laughs> I lost my hours. Good thing I remembered what I had. So that's a note to self, you know, to you also got to record your latest hours before your battery is disconnected so you can program that figure back in. So I did that. I was also trying to uh, reattach my uh, the hour meter back on the excavator because I I made that 3D printed mount for it, but it keeps I keep gluing it and it keeps coming off. And I'm using some pretty good epoxy, so I'm, I'm going to try one more time with the glue. But what happened was when I disconnect the uh, the blade connectors on the back of the hour meter pulls off the connecting blade right off the back of the hour meter, the soldered connection. Uh, that's not the first time it happened, and it's supposed to be a uh, supposed to be a you know quality meter, but I had to go pick it back to the garage again and solder the connection back on. So that was the second one, and there's three. So I just went ahead and soldered the third one, unsoldered it, and put a better solder on that. So I've got my hour meter ready to go back on and reset it. It's real easy to reset. They give you a little remote control, wireless remote control. The big push for this maintenance brake was the quick hitch. And what you'll see in the video is we're taking that quick hitch off and taking it to the garage to, to work on it there. Uh, the main problem with that was the, one of the pins was too short when I got this machine. And I was so excited that I, I started using it and the pin uh, jammed in there. Uh, so the good thing was that it wasn't falling out. The bad thing, it was too short <laughs> and it was jammed in there. So I took this opportunity to finally just take the whole hitch off and first fix that pin. And there was two grease fittings on the quick hitch that needed attention. Um, one was, was gone, it fell out and I thought the threads were bad, but when I took it back to the garage, I, f I found the threads were okay and I was able to thread a new Zerk fitting in there. And so I replaced all the Zerk fittings in the hitch and took a lot of the pieces to the machine shop, which you'll see. So this, this machine has a, a panel hook on the back. Well, it's, I mean, just a, not your traditional panel hook, but it's a, it's a mount for a pin. Uh, you, so you could put a, a chain through it or um, a toe strap or something like that. But all the pins that came with the machine don't fit that as one inch diameter hole. Also taking one of the pins to the machine shop to have it turned down to one inch. The ignition switch on here, I was having problems with it recently because when you would uh, try to start it, it would start and then turn off, start, turn off. And then if you wiggled the key, you know, you could hear the starter solenoid engaging and disconnecting. My initial thought was it's a bad key cylinder or, or a loose connection on there somewhere. So I took that out, took the, uh, the cylinder out, and it's a direct wire into the cylinder. Uh, and then the other side goes to a multi-wire uh, connector, plastic connector, male-female type. So there was nothing to tighten up. There was no uh, connections on there that I, that I could see that were loose or pulling out or anything. And the funny thing is when I took it out and tried to get it to, to do it, it wouldn't happen again. So I reinstalled the key cylinder and now it's just fine. It's not doing it anymore. I don't, I don't know what the problem was. We'll see what happens. That's going to be a wait and see. The line covers here, we did these a couple weeks ago just to keep whatever debris you're working with from falling on your hydraulic hose. We found the perfect steel plate. Uh, we had a lot left over from the door project. So we welded these over the, 
the blade actuator. We decided to do the same thing on the, on the rear. The motor drives, um, there's two lines on each. And I had already dropped a few things on one. So I wanted to protect those. So we did the same thing. We took some steel, Don Don measured everything and why and cut it up and we welded those on. These are blade extensions. They're included with the machine and they attach with, the, with pins right here. But uh, when I had this for about a week, I hit a curb with this, bla with this blade extension on and it, it ret retracted this way and it bent it real bad. So we tried to put them back on to see if we can get them to work, but they're so misaligned. I just decided to weld, weld this in four places. And uh, cause I don't think I'm gonna be going through any more uh, cramped spaces. The, re the reason why these come off is so when you retract your tracks, you know, you can fit through smaller areas, but I don't think I need that anymore. So we just welded that up. And the one I'm sitting on is fine. It's still using, still using the pin. And my exhaust, there's like a, a, a mounting cover on it. It keeps loosening up. And I lost one bolt. When I backed into a tree, it actually sheared the bolt head off. And then the second bolt was loosening up. So I took it out and put a lot of uh, thread locker on there and it was good for a couple months and now it's, it's backing out already so that's still on my list to do it's kind of hard to get to back here so i'm not sure i'll try it again with thread locker and see see what we can do with that see how this pin this pin's recessed in here it's not long enough there's a little bit in there but it, it never came all the way through and i was never able to pin it but at the same time, it never came out. So I believe it to be stuck. Uh, I want to get it out. I want to take this quick hitch to the garage and do some uh, preventive maintenance to it. There's uh, some grease fittings here that uh, this one's missing. I think it needs re-threaded. This one's not working. This one is missing as well. So I want to take the whole thing in and and take it apart and clean it up and fix what's ever wrong with it. But getting it off is going to be possibly difficult. We might have to use the air hammer here and maybe even heat this up to get this pin out. And then I've got a longer pin that I'm going to have um, take it to the machine shop and have them cut it to size. This is the rear. I want to use this uh, as a pintle. But all the pins that came with it, with the excavator don't fit. It's, this is too small of a hole. So I'm going to measure this hole and then take a, take one of my long pins to the machine shop and have it turn it down to fit. Another one of our projects here is going to be making uh, some type of cover. Um, we'll probably use some steel angle iron and uh, I might pick up these bolts or we might just weld it to cover these motor drive lines. You can see I've already dropped some things on this one but I want to cover those up. We did cover the front. It worked out pretty good. We, we welded two plates here to cover these hoses on the blade. Here's what I'm talking about. You can probably hear this. Funny thing is, when I when I remove the the key cylinder and I move it around, it's it's not happening. Even when I remove the move the wires around here. Uh, let's let's throw some WD-40 on all of those first. I'll, I'll manipulate it. While you, I'll go up and down. While you, while you uh,
so we're thinking about using this we had some thick sheet steel left over from the door we're going to use part of it to cover these these lines from getting hit i think that'll absorb any impact from almost anything that i drop on We have to do something different here because these hoses are higher. Maybe just angle the top a little bit. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Got plenty. Of, well, get enough clearance there. was another problem I was having for the longest time I've been running this blade without these extensions but the extensions are a good idea but the only problem is when you hit something you know hard here this just rides what rides up on that metal tab and it folds in so what I think is uh, we either increase the height of this tab or we tack we tack these up just with a couple welds I don't I don't see myself taking them off uh, going not going through any more tight spaces with the pin in I think it's bent so bad I think the ears are bent so there's not much I can do with that maybe if we take the pin out if we can get it to line up and we'll just tack it on what happens with that if you see that that hole that's how bad it is I think we'd have to we'd have to cut these ears off and then re-weld them back on but I don't think I want to go through all that because like I said I'm not going to take these off so we'll just tack it up four places here on the front and then if if I do need to take it off, we'll just grind it off. All right, we're back in the garage with the quick hitch. Just gonna have to do a lot of degreasing first and clean this thing up. managed to clean it up decently it's still dirty i think i might try to to be blasted after i take a look at some of these grease fittings i'm going to remove the grease fittings that i can and replace them there was a fitting here that's missing and i don't think the threads are any good in there anymore i wasn't able to thread a new one in and this one it's kind of bent here and it's hard to get the, the grease nipple on there. Um, I did break this the other day, but I was lucky enough to find a similar one locally. So I bought two of these. So I'm gonna try to get this first grease fitting out. See, that 
wasn't even in there very tight. And this one, I, I think this one was working, but I'm gonna replace it if I can. I'm just glad that these aren't, these were never bent. Um, if you remember, the, the one pin that was in here was too short and it got jammed in there. But I'm glad it didn't really damage anything that I can see yet. This is also interesting here. I don't know if this is the way that all quick hitches are made, but it looks like this is this is a captive uh, clamp in here. You can't remove it. So you know it was put in there prior to being welded. These these zerk fittings in the pins seem to be okay. Uh, I'm not seeing any any clogs. The springs in the fitting in the zerk fittings seem to be fine. I'd shoot some grease through here, but uh, what I want to show you later is I changed out I changed my my grease gun. I had a powered grease gun, a handheld type. And it was it was really really difficult to work with. I mean, the Inco is the brand, and they, they sell the grease gun and the batteries, but they don't sell grease. You know, I guess what I'm saying is they they don't sell the the cartridge that fits it. You know, so I was running around everywhere trying to find a, a cartridge that works with this gun and. Never could find one, which is really strange. But uh, so the the grease cartridges that I had to use never really worked. I, I I was having to remove the grease with a plunger, you know, and kind of plunge it in the gun. And I was probably getting you know forty percent of of the grease. You know, in the machine, the rest was everywhere else. So that that came to a head. We got tired of that real quick, and we decided to buy a, a pneumatic gun. And so we found a 30-liter uh, roll-around bucket gun that we're using now and what a difference that made. Not just, you know, making it easier, but the first time I used it, I realized, wow, I wasn't getting enough grease in the machine to begin with. I mean, that little, the little handheld one, it, I mean, it had a, a big battery and it, it sounded like it was doing the job but this this new gun with uh hooking up a pancake air compressor to it it really showed me how much grease wasn't getting in the machine so i'll probably make a video of that new new grease gun we have Okay, this part of the quick hitch is cleaned up and I've got new grease fittings in it. These two are ready for paint. This is almost ready for paint, but what I need to do, this pin has to go to the machine shop to be turned down to one inch. This is for the pinnel hook. This new pin going to replace the one that was too short. The problem with this new pin is number one, it doesn't have an oil passage or a grease passage in here. So I need to have them drill a, a grease passage and I need them to see if we can refit this 
because the way it stands now, it's not sized right. It's just a, too much of a gap here. I think maybe what we can do is just turn this 90 degrees and drill a new hole. make that flush. This is what I think it'll look like here. This is the existing hole. I'm going to drill a new hole here and then drill a grease hole here and then I want them to polish the rest of the pins because they're a little little beat up. And I don't want to have to beat them back in. I just want to just do a polish with some emery cloth. And then I think they can do it faster than me on the lathe. Okay, we've got our pins back from the machine shop. They're all polished up ready to go. This one was turned down to one inch. This one had an extra hole drilled in it. And sandblasted all the parts. And so it's just a matter of uh, taking it back out there and see if we can put it all back together. That's right. I think we're going to have to extend the ram. Easy now. The other way. Keep coming. Oh, just a little bit more. Okay. Oh, back. Back. Okay, right there. Get the, uh, the big pliers and line up the holes. So you're going to want to line up. This one looks pretty good. So watch this hole right here. Make it big.
open up your jaws. Give it a couple of taps on. Okay, this one. This one needs to come back. Up. Up. I'd like to use pins on all of them. So let me see if we have more pins. That's what I wanted to fix too. See this hole? For some reason there's a hole in there. And it's, it's the grease is just coming out that hole and here. I wonder, I mean, I don't know why. There's no threads. That's one thing I forgot to do is you gotta try to plug those holes, I guess. Well we're getting we're getting good squeeze out. Yeah. Maybe they're supposed to be there, but we'll have to check on that. <laughs> 